Welcome to Creating Our Holy Home. I'm your host, Jillian Hofer, and I am so excited to be speaking to the Catholic moms, the Catholic wives, the Catholic women who are trying to bring their families to heaven one small intentional thing at a time. Have you ever felt like you wanted to have more conversations about your faith or be more open to having conversations about your faith, but you were so worried about maybe being wrong or not having all the facts straight? Our faith is so filled with so much richness that I know for myself, sometimes I get paralyzed at the thought of like, oh, what if I get caught and don't know what I'm talking about? Or someone asks me a follow-up question and I don't know the answer. Like I've got my spiel for the thing I want to talk about, but then what if someone digs deeper and I don't have the answer? That is why I am so excited to share this conversation that I had with Sam from Cultivating Catholic with you all today. You may be one of Sam's like 80,000 followers on both her blog and Instagram handle Cultivating Catholics, where she shares simple, accessible, incredible information about our faith and just teaching not only your children and your family, but also yourself and your friends about the richness of our faith in very simple terms. Sam is a Catholic convert with six kids aged eight and under. She started out as a photojournalist in the Air Force, which is where she met her husband. She shares a little bit of that story today uh, when we chat. And she has degrees in special education and public affairs. Now she stays home with her kiddos, evangelizing to them, teaching them, and also sharing all of her incredible resources with the world. So cannot wait for you to hear a conversation today. I think you're going to really walk away empowered to not only evangelize better to your family and your kids, but also anyone that you meet. Sam, thank you so much for being here on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be the official first interview. You are. It's so exciting. We Before we hit record, we were just talking about Sam. So Sam has six children, ages one to eight. Sam, is that right? Yes. I got to think about it. How old are they? Yes. We were just talking about the debacle of like loading kids up for carpool, getting people out the door. And I'm like, I have one child. I have one nine month old. And some days I'm like, it's too much for me. So Sam is superwoman in my eyes. Thank you. It is a real struggle. It is a real struggle. (laughs) But you are doing the thing. (laughs) My husband that we have like one week of school left. My husband goes, we're just limping toward the finish line. I'm like that we are. (laughs) This is relatable. Everyone here is going to be like, yup, I feel that. You are not alone. Okay, so six children, ages one to eight. Um, You also are, you and your husband met in the military, correct? Will you tell me a little bit about your background just because I think it plays into your story and the topic of today so well. Yeah, so I went to college for a little bit and it was the worst. Um, And I called my mom crying because I was failing my math class. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And I come from a long line of military. Like my mom was in, my dad was in, stepmom, stepdad, grandpa, uncle, like everyone was in the military. She was like, Sam, why don't you just join the Air Force? And I was like, fine. Um, She was like, you don't have to stay in. Like if you hate it, you just do your four years or your six years, whatever your commitment was. And then you can get out and do whatever you want. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll try it out. Um, So I joined, got to my first base in Denver. Um, I was 19 and I was just like living my best life on my own. Got my, got my own car, got my paychecks. I'm in the air force. No intentions of getting married or settling down or having kids like no. Um, And then I met my husband maybe 10 days after I got there. And we went out on one date and I remember sitting there just being like, I'm going to marry this guy. Like this is, this is literally my husband right now. On day one. On day one. Yes. Love it. So, um, yeah. And it was funny because that was his first base too. So we were just like brand new, fresh in the air force and. Oh my gosh. Met each other pretty much right away and then got engaged real quick and got married real quick. Okay, but then along the route there, you were not Catholic when you met your husband. I was Catholic, not Catholic. Was. Right, and he's very Catholic. He's very Italian. His family is very Catholic. Um, and when we started getting more serious, he was like, we sat down, we had a big old talk, and he was like, if this is going to continue, like, I want you to know that I want to raise my kids Catholic because it's very important to me. And I was very not Catholic. I didn't grow up with any sort of, like, religious background at all. Um 
And I was just like, that's not going to work because I'm not going to raise my kids to be something that I don't believe in. Like, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not going to do that. Um, and he's like, that's fine. You know, I just, we're not going to be able to continue this because I'm looking like, I'm not just going to date you for fun. Like I'm going to date you to find my future wife. Um, so we kind of just left it at that. And then I just like watched him and watched how the fate, how important that was to him. And he would invite me to mass every Sunday. And I would always tell him, no, I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> like, you go have fun. I've got better things to do, which thinking about it now, what on earth did I have to do? <laughs> like nothing. Um, so I, and it just, I was just looking at him like this big, tall, strong, like military man. And yet every Sunday he makes it a point to go to mass. So I started going just to see what it was all about. And I started talking to like the deacons and the priests and asking some questions, just like putting some feelers out there and like really listening to the homilies and the gospel readings. And like, it was, I just fell in love with it. Like it was the craziest thing. Like someone that was so anti-organized religion, when I was able to just sit back and like let down my guard and just be like, what is it about this religion that like people love so much? Um, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. It, God was just like, yes, you need to be here. I've been waiting for you. It's amazing how God just like pokes and pokes and pokes until you're yes. ready. It's just like, I'm here. I'm, yes. I'm ready when you yep. are. Like, He's like, I'm go. waiting. Yep. That is incredible. Yep. Okay. So then I went through um, RCIA um, and then I got confirmed and baptized and all that two weeks before our wedding. Oh my gosh. So then big catholic mass wedding right that's right yeah oh my gosh what a way to come in dude that's amazing i know it was awesome it was like so beautiful and it was so perfect did that just like elevate it for you even more because like it it seriously did like it's one thing to think about marriage in like a secular society knowing that it's special like yes you're married to someone but getting married in the catholic church like as a sacrament just amazing just so beautiful like I don't want to say more important, but it just really solidifies like what you're doing and the importance behind what you're doing. The thing that has hit me so much about the like sacrament of marriage in the Catholic Church as a married woman has been like hearing it talked about as like, you know, it's an indelible mark on your soul. Like when you are yes. married, like you go through yes. the sacrament together and it is an indelible mark on your soul. And I'm like, that is amazing. And it's like so powerful. It is so. Yeah. It's like every little fight every little thing you go through then you're just like it feels like it pales in comparison to that and yes. like what a beautiful way to enter into that in that mass together when you're already like two weeks in you're like so on fire that's amazing i'm all fresh i know it was amazing <laughs> oh that's incredible okay so the reason i wanted to have you on the show today is because you have created an amazing community that started as a blog and now has kind of moved into an Instagram called Cultivating Catholics. Tell yes. me a little bit about that and how that came about kind of in the midst of all of this. Yeah. So about three years ago, um, <clears throat> we were getting ready to move again. We've moved so many times since we've been married just because of my husband's job in the military. Mm -hmm. And I was just starting to feel very overwhelmed because I would look up crafts or like recipes or activities to do with the kids to like start learning about feast days with them and like how to celebrate them. And I was just like so overwhelmed with all the things because you just type in one thing in Google and there's like 500 pages with like all these ideas. And I was just feeling so overwhelmed. So I wouldn't do anything because I was like, well, I don't now I have all these choices. Like, what if I do this and it's not like as good as doing this? I don't know what to do. So I just wouldn't do anything. And I told Mark, my husband, I was like, I wish there was just a website where you could just go. Just, you know, not a 5,000 word blog, you know, like just a short, simple to the point. Here's what you need to know about this feast day. Here's an activity you might want to do about it. Here's some extra resources if you're interested. Have a nice day. And there's like nothing like that until you came on find anything. So then I, I was like, we're do I'm starting this myself. So we're doing this. I cannot be the only one that is feeling like this. Um, and it turns out I wasn't because thousands of people started reading the blog and um, begrudgingly I made the 
Facebook page and the Instagram page. I didn't have any social media before that because I'm like anti-social media, which is so funny. Um, but all the business gurus say you have to have social media for your business. So I did. Um, and people just flocked to it. And I wasn't doing anything extraordinary or like I didn't have any of these like philosophical like books that I was writing. It was just very basic like today's this Saint's Feast Day. Here's a couple facts about them. Or I don't know. Today I posted um, why do Catholics display crucifixes instead of crosses? Just like very basic things like that, that it turns out like a lot of people don't really know about cradle Catholics, converts. It's just like little things like that, that they were never taught or it just never sunk in. So yeah, here we are today. Well, first of all, I don't want you to under uh, undersell yourself. Also, you have tens of thousands of followers on Instagram. <laughs> like you were, you were, you started this thing and then got affirmed very quickly because you were not the yeah. only one that needed this stuff. So it's like, first of all, I need to thank you for making this because I am oh, a cradle Catholic you. who follows your account, who learns something every yeah. time you post something. And I'm like, yeah, this is stuff. I went to Catholic school. I was catechized very well, right. youth group growing up, but it's like, this is the stuff that sometimes the basics are just glossed over or kind of exactly. I don't know. I feel like in maybe my generation of catechesis, it was just kind of like a, that's the way it is. Like it's a, because I told right. you so type of deal. Yeah. And instead, yes. like, I love the simplicity that you bring to some of the concepts that are very, very simple. And then some of the concepts that are like very deeply theological, you yes. bring a simplicity that it's like, I have a friend who converted and brought her children into the church a few years ago. I pointed her to your account because she was feeling overwhelmed. Thank she was you. like, I don't know how to teach my kids how to be Catholic when I'm still learning yes. how to be Catholic. And I said, yes. hello, Sam's your gal. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, it was it was so funny. It was just like meant for moms with children. And then all of these people started coming like teenagers, cradle Catholics, like people who don't even have kids were just coming in droves to learn about all this, like sim all these simple things. Like I made a post about holy water and it's, you would think every single Catholic in the world knows what holy water is and they don't like such a simple, basic item. People don't know about it. It is such amazing work that you're doing. So thank you. It's like truly the goodness of social media. Like you are bringing the goodness to it. So yes, I know you are, you are like walking the walk and talking the talk of you've got kids ages one through eight, all different ages, kind of trying to learn the faith in different ways. I'm sure you're trying to teach the faith in different ways as you've grown up. Talk to me a little bit about how you've approached teaching your kids and catechizing your kids as they've grown up in like the seasons of your family and the ages that they've been. Yeah. So when our two oldest were little, um, we didn't really do much. I mean, we said like a prayer before bed and then we went to mass on Sunday, of course. But as far as like Jesus dying on the cross, like we just, we just didn't really talk about that because they're so little, you know, they didn't want to talk about death. They didn't even know what death was. Um, but now it's funny now that they're older our two oldest are seven and eight. Now the little ones know all about death, know all about Jesus dying on the cross, know all about sins, like what sinning is, about heaven. I haven't really talked much about hell with them, but they definitely know what heaven is. Um, it's just been, it's funny, like as much as I want to shelter the little ones, like, oh no, we shouldn't be talking about like nails going into Jesus's hand. Like, they did. And it's true. And, you know, I can't like coddle them and hide them from that. Um, and I what I have found, though, is that teaching them that while they're so young has been really impactful because mm. it took a while for the older ones to get it. And then they were older. So it wasn't like as ingrained with them, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it was like more of a shock. But now that the little ones have grown up with it, they're just like, oh, yeah, you know, Jesus He's dead on the cross and he has nails in his hands. And we're like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you you would be correct in that. Yes. yes. <laughs> Which like so. outside of Catholic circles, a bonkers thing for a two-year-old. Horrifying. <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but for us, we're like, yes. And that's an amazing sacrifice for our <laughs> sins. <laughs> Good job. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. Um, I know that like 
myself as a new parent coming into this. I think the biggest thing that I've been thinking about so much as we're growing into the phase of like, okay, she's going to start understanding things. We've got to start kind of working things in. Yes. Do you guys have like routines or do you have certain, not curriculum, but like how do you work these kind of like lessons and teaching moments into your day at home? Do they come about naturally most of the time or like do you guys yes. have ways that you ingrain things? So with the little ones, what we started with were like little board books, just teaching them about the different saints and the different stories. Um, but now like as the kids have gotten older and we have more kids, it is funny. It is like ingrained in our day almost because, I mean, we have our routines before bed. Like I'll bless all of them with holy water before bed. We say mm -hmm. the angel of God prayer. Um, but it's like things like when it comes to sinning, like if the kids do something wrong, it's not me just saying like, go sit and time out. It's like you hurt Jesus by sinning. So it's like these lessons are like ingrained in daily life, which I love because it's like I'm not sitting down teaching them like this, this, this and this. It's like we flow through our day while you learn about all this stuff. Um, so yeah, and it helps too. I know not everyone can have their kids go to Catholic school, but we send our kids to Catholic school and it's just like, it's just so nice to have that religious class mm -hmm. in their day, every day. Um, or like our daughter just received first Holy communion. So she was going through all the sacrament prep and learning about all the sacraments and she would bring home homework and like the little ones would watch her do her homework and like she would talk to them about it. And they were there. They came with us for her when she received f Holy Communion. Like so special. They're just like there in it. So it, it gets easier like as they get older and as you have more kids. Because when our first two were little, it was like, eh. like they're not in school yet. I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess like read them some books. So it's definitely gotten easier. Like as I've gotten into a flow and as they've gotten older, it's gotten easier. But yeah, the first, the first two is kind of, I, it was trial and error. Oh my gosh. I, I'm like, I feel like I'm getting into that phase now with my daughter being so young. Tell me a little bit about in the beginning. Cause I mean, you, you had your first daughter yes. pretty early into your marriage. Yes. Honeymoon so you baby. Had, honeymoon baby. Love honeymoon it. Honeymoon baby. You had just converted. Like you were you were I a fresh did. convert. L I was. Still smelling like chrism oil, probably. Thank I God. was. <laughs> <laughs> Best smell in the world. It's so good. Um how were you teaching yourself like alongside your kids? Was there a moment that you had that you were like, oh, I, I need to start teaching these things and I don't even know them myself? Or like yes, how did that come because, about for you? Yeah, because it's one thing knowing it yourself, but mm -hmm. then being able to tell someone else about it or like teach someone else about it is just a whole different ball yeah. game because you can understand it but to get someone else to understand it you gotta it's hard to do that um honestly starting cultivating catholics has been amazing i have learned so much from starting that page because people question things or they challenge things or they tell me like actually this isn't right in your post and i'm like oh yeah you're right that's not correct um because it's caused me to do more research and like delve deeper into things. Um, so cultivating Catholics has been huge personally for me. <clears throat> um, but a few other resources I used were Kendra Tierney from Catholic all year. She was huge. She Amazing. was instrumental um, because she's really good at integrating that family life into like celebrating feast days and everything. And I, and I was like, that's a really good place to start is learning how to live liturgically. Like, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but we have a calendar year and there are different feast days throughout this year. I'll start there. So that's what I did. And I started like making like cookies and just, you know, little activities like that to kind of start living liturgically, which then bleeds into like ordinary time, Lent, Advent, and just slowly but surely starting to add little routines and activities into those times um so Kendra Tierney was huge for me um Catholic Icing CatholicIcing.com is also for it she's got like so many crafts and so many activities for kids and moms um she was huge for me too 
um, as I've gotten older and like more theological, because when I was first, you know, when you first convert, you're just like, oh, yeah, this is Catholicism and these are the sacraments. Um, now that I'm past that point, now I'm like getting deeper into like the theology behind it and reading like the early church fathers and everything. Um, so Catholic Answers, Catholic.com has been immensely helpful. Um and I'm a big podcast person. So like Pints with Aquinas, just, you know, just like little resources like that along the way. I listen to on my off time and it just makes me feel more equipped and strengthened to talk to my kids about hard things because mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm more knowledgeable and solid in my faith. Whereas before I was solid in that I knew that Jesus was real and that I wanted to be Catholic. But as far as convincing someone else, like, oh. Eh, not so much, but now I feel like much more confident, like let's sit down and have a conversation. So it just takes time and it takes dedication because there's so much to learn. Like our faith is so vast. It's crazy. It is crazy. I think something that you said that is very powerful to me, and I think super relatable for a lot of people who have either worked in ministry or like are parenting kids who are Catholic, is you said that people will call you out on being wrong. On all the time cultivating catholics but that hasn't stopped you like you keep coming back and you keep saying like oh yep amazing opportunity to learn like yes. there's a lot of humility that comes with that have you yeah. ever have you have you gotten to the point with your kids yet that you've ever gotten a question asked or you started to explain something and you've had those doubtful moments oh all the time all the time and i always tell people don't be afraid to not know the answer like don't it's okay your kids don't expect you to know everything. It's okay to say to them, you know what? That's a really good question. I don't know. Like, let's learn about it together. Let's look it up on my phone really quick. And that was something I struggled with because you want to be like, you want to be that strong person for your child. Like, yes, let me teach you about Catholicism. It's very real. And this is why. And then they ask you a question. And they just throw you a curveball. And you're like, wait, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Catholic answer is help. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yes, but I always tell people like don't don't flounder around and like try to come up with some answer because they're not going to believe you for one, and for two they're not going to trust you after that. Like it's okay to tell them you don't know. That's something I had to learn. And I tell my kids that. My kids are always asking me questions and I'm always like, "I don't know. That's a really good question." And then we come back later, we talk about it later on that night after I've had time to like kind of look into it myself. Very humbling. It's so humbling, but I feel like it's the thing that stops so many people from, yes. I don't know, even even catechizing at home, but just evangelizing in general. Yes, it's like talking to anybody about Catholicism. Yes. yes, there's such a fear of being wrong, but it's like, man, what the ultimate humility is like. I will do it anyway. I will yes. answer these questions. I will tell my kids I don't know, but I will go find the answers with them. Yes. And I think there's something powerful about doing that alongside them. Totally. And it helps oh. too, just out in the open, like in society in general, you're not going to have all the answers. Like people are going to throw questions at you and you're just going to be like, uh, <laughs> like I have no clue. And it's okay. Like it's okay to not know the answer and... God will strengthen you. He strengthens you through your humility. Like, he knows what you're trying to do. He sees you. Even if, you know, someone's coming at you and you just totally blew your chance, it's okay. You tried. You did your best. You're not an expert. You don't have all your degrees in theology. You didn't go to Franciscan University. Like, it's fine. You just keep, you just keep going on. He strengthens us in our humility. That is that is huge. And it's so true. It's so true. It's so true. So your older kids, are they getting to the age that they're starting to ask questions that are stumping you more? Not, not yet. I feel like they're still kind of in that baby phase where they're just like, yes, I just listen to everything everyone tells me. And I, I agree with it. <laughs> like Jesus they're still in that me. cute, they're still in that like sweet, cute phase. We're not really at the um, rebel phase yet where they're like questioning everything and, you know, wondering if this is true. And, oh, so-and-so said this. Thankfully, we're not there yet, but I'm ready. I'm prepared because I just 
because not everyone in their class is Catholic either. And I was prepared for Olivia to say like, hey, why isn't everyone at my first Holy Communion? But she didn't bring it up to me. And I think it's because her teacher just did a really good job of just, you know, straight up saying like they're not receiving communion. They're not Catholic. Yep. It's a sacrament that Catholics receive. They're not Catholic, so they won't be receiving it. And I think she just left it at that and just, you know, let it go. And it just, I was like amazed that Olivia didn't ask me anything about that. God bless those religion teachers, right? They're the ones I fielding know. all the questions from the second yeah. graders. I know. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. So yeah, oh we're not at, we're not at any sort of like crazy questions yet, but you're ready. I'm ready. I can't wait for the day. That'll be amazing. You're gonna it's cultivating Catholics is gonna become like, all right, now I'm just answering my kids' questions and it's getting deep, man. Seriously. <laughs> yes. How to parent teenagers in yeah. the Catholic faith. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Sam, so for people who are like my friend who's a convert, who has kids, who is learning the faith herself, doesn't know where to start, for people maybe with older kids who are just now getting deeper in their faith or finding it more serious that they want to help catechize their kids more than just like youth group in school, what would be your recommendation for like the bare minimum of where to start? I hate to say this, but social media has been extraordinary. Um I feel like everyone's on Instagram. Everyone's on Facebook. Be careful of who you follow, but it has been, it's been a wild ride in a good way. Just learning so much from it. Cause like I said, I didn't have social media before I started cultivating Catholics and just the people I follow, I have just been extraordinary in how I perceive the faith, what I've learned about the faith, how I feel about the faith. Like, Um, yeah, that's been amazing. So I hate to say it. I hate to say social media, but truly there is such a community, um, in the online space, honestly. Um, also I'm a big podcast person. So like, there's so many Catholic podcasts. You'd literally just have to like search Catholic on your podcast app and it'll pull up all sorts of podcasts. Um, but honestly, Kendra Tierney, like her Catholic all year book hands down the best it's just just easy just simple wording easy liturgical activities just served on a platter so helpful it's amazing and I feel like her book was the first time that I fully it clicked for me that I was like oh we're a church of like celebrations it's like we have an excuse to celebrate all year long and like what a what a cheat sheet what a joy that we get to do that absolutely yes yes do you does your family have any big fun family feast days or any big liturgical times a year that are fun and big for you guys so something that i started doing after reading kendra tierney's book was um celebrating baptism days because she talks about how important they are like more important than birthdays and i'm thinking like Honestly, yes. Like your birthday is cool and all. It's when you were born and you came into the world. But your baptism day, that's when you joined the church. Like you were baptized in Christ. So that's a big day for us. Like I always pull out their little baptism photo and their little baptism candle. And then they get to pick, like they'll get to pick the dinner or like dessert that night. Just make it, just make it special for them. What a great idea. That's one of my favorite ones. Yeah. So fun. I love that idea. Yes. I, oh. I used to do more like recipe type stuff for more feast days. But as we've had more kids, I do not have time for that. I was going to say, those are the kind of things that you just go like, listen, we're going to choose the big ones that are important to us that will yes. keep going. Others exactly. will come and go with the seasons yep. of our family. That's right. And I'll even like, we don't even celebrate that many feast days, but I'll always like randomly be like, hey, it's St. Bernadette's feast day today. She did X, Y, and Z. Like as they're leaving for school. It's that simple. So simple. So oh, impactful. Oh, Sam. It's such a good reminder that it literally can just be that simple. Yes. Truly. How awesome. Yep. Oh, Sam, this has been amazing. I literally am like, I'm taking notes. I'm already taking <laughs> stuff away. I'm like, baptism days. Already already going to yes. do the pick a dinner, pick a dessert. So fun. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us on creating our holy home please tell us where we can find you all over the internet yes so instagram cultivating catholics um facebook is cultivating catholics 
I tried out Pinterest for a while. I'm not super active on it because it takes a lot of time to create pins. <laughs> um, but I'm on Pinterest too. Um, have a YouTube channel that also I am not very active on because it also takes a tremendous amount of time. <laughs> and then um, cultivatingcatholics.com is like my main blog. Amazing. We will be linking all of those in the episode show notes here. So please, you guys, at the very least, you have to go follow Sam's Instagram. It is so incredible to be able to just see little things come through and it prompts great discussions with your family and your kids and your spouse and just like even yourself. It's amazing little things to learn. So Sam, thank you so much. This was such thank a joy you. talking to you. This was so much fun. Yes, this was. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Creating Our Holy Home. This show is sponsored by Catholic Home Goods brand, Our Holy Home. And we'd love to offer you 15% off your first order. So head over to ourholyhome.com and use the code podcast at checkout. For more sustainable practices and tips to get your family to heaven, subscribe to our email list at ourholyhome.com slash subscribe. We'll be praying for you and your families this week, and we will be back very soon with more.